Hello, it's a great privilege to come again and to continue uh, making some uh, presentation. Uh, we are continuing to look at uh, apologetics or apologia uh, as we get it in the Greek word, uh, which essentially means to defend a position, uh, an assertion, or something that we are convinced about is true. But in this case, we are talking about Christian apologetics. In a previous presentation, we have talked about the types of uh, um, apologetics. We talked about uh, evidential. Uh, we also talked about <clears throat> presupposition. And uh, also, finally, we talked about integrated apologetics. Uh, but we did say that there is a continuum uh, in, in that there are different schools of thought, even in each respective school that I talked about. But in this uh, in this uh, uh, unit, we are looking at um, mind manipulation. Mind manipulation. The Christian needs to know that out there, there's so many things that are going on and they're affecting uh, not only the way that they do things, but the way they think and their value system. Uh, and, and, and by way of introduction, would say that uh, we live in a very interesting time. Uh, historically, uh, we could almost tell what was going to happen, who was going to say what, who was in control, and so on. But in recent times, we have had different sources of information, different, different authorities uh, that speak into our lives, <clears throat> to the extent that the mind is the one that is really the center and focus of everything, because uh, those that would do marketing, and in fact, even the devil himself knows that if I control the mind, if I manipulate the mind, then I will have got the entirety of a person. Just look at um, the news outlets, uh, the explosion of information technology. In fact, we live in an age called the information age or a weightless economy. What are they saying? It is ideas that matter. It is the information. If you're able to garner it, put it together, and send it uh, to different places in a very, very short time. So in the past, it would take many months and years to send an idea outside. But now, it just takes a click and information goes. Very well then, uh, we need to proceed and talk about mind manipulation. Now, obviously, the word manipulation seems to carry a negative connotation. And, 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 and really, in this case, I think uh, it's an appropriate word because it has to do with uh, tweaking, changing, twisting, uh, and, and, and changing the mind uh, or thought or value system of uh, an individual or a group of people or even an entire population. Uh, let me let me demonstrate what I'm saying. Recently, we had our general elections in Zambia, uh, not, not, not too long ago. Uh, and the sitting president was very comfortable. He was so sure that he had won because he was relying largely on the ancient, well-tried instruments that he could use to leverage and to control people and to control the information that somebody uh, get. So the larger populace of Zambians, probably it was likely they were going to get the information from, uh, you know, TV and radio, those are the, the state controlled. But what he didn't know is that uh, today's youth who are called the uh, netizens or would I say the no, no, not immigrants or dinosaurs like you and I perhaps but these are people who are the internet generation they, they, they have grown up with these tools so what happens is that they get information from everywhere and they're able to assess and make up a decision now these young people were getting information from other sources, so that when we went for the election, the incumbent president was more than confident that he would win. But what he didn't know is that they were getting instruction from elsewhere. And so what did they do? They turned up en masse and voted the man out. 
How did he lose it? How could a sitting president, especially in Africa, lose it? Well, I'll put it to you. Is that sources of information, authorities, and so on have increased. We live in a pluralistic society uh, and even a relative society that, uh, you know, increasingly uh, thrives on uh, relativism, uh, so to speak. So when we talk about mind manipulation, we are talking about controlling the mind, controlling the thought uh, center, the nerve center where somebody makes decisions, where the will sits, and that faculty which is able to control uh, where somebody goes. So what are we saying? Uh, would like to say that uh, the Bible places a lot of uh, a lot of emphasis on the mind, on the heart, and, and and our thought processes. The Bible does say that the Christian must be very careful what they take in and the things that come out of their mind. Of course, the argument of the scriptures is that the things that somebody takes in, the physical thing, are not the ones that. Uh, so much pollute somebody. But it is what comes out of this rotten and fallen heart is what is sinful. But the scriptures also say, guard your heart, guard your mind, guard that which you use to, to take in information. In other words, you and I must guard our eye get, our ear get, and perhaps our mouth get, the things that we say. Why should we pay attention to the things that we read, to the things that we're exposed to, to the company that we keep. I'd like to put it to you. The Bible knows that if the mind is invaded, if the mind is affected, then the whole person uh, is lost. So the Bible makes emphasis. For instance, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, he talks about avoid all appearance of evil. In 1 Corinthians, it talks about, 1 Corinthians, I think it should be chapter 10, it talks about our weapons are not carnal. You know, we, we, we get captive of every thought. What is he saying? It is the mind that is important, that we must guard and take care of. But what, or would I say, why should we guard our minds and our hearts so jealously? Well, we have already, in a sense, talked about it. If your heart and your mind is infected, then the outcome, the practice, and what you believe and value begins to change. And you do things that you never, ever imagined that you would do. So the scriptures are very clear. It is important to guard the heart and the mind. But the other reason why we should guard and, uh, you know, uh, um, the, the mind, why is it important? It is because what we pass on to the next generation most likely will be something that we ourselves have valued and also our children and, and, and so on will be able to buy in and move on and think it's normal. But thirdly, we need to say this, is that because of the explosion of information and, and, and mind control techniques, especially the cows and others, they use mind control techniques. They can even cripple somebody. And they're so powerful, so effective, and they push and push and push. And if you're not careful, you and I might go into bondage, that which Christ has set us free uh, many years ago. So if we're not careful for those three reasons, we may be in trouble. So, but how does mind manipulation take place? We have said mind manipulation, it's a control of the mind. But how does it take place? Well, simply, there are many ways that it takes place. I would like to suggest some here, but if you read your reading, uh, you know, assigned reading, you will get the details properly laid out. First of all, uh, because of the things that are happening now, the devil and, and his emissaries and all those that work with him know that if they can get the mind before anybody takes in biblical truth or anything, they could come and uh, detract the mind, 
pulling it away from God. So how does it happen? Well, I'd like to suggest, first of all, that mind manipulation does take place uh, when you are first introduced to something that ordinarily you would not accept. And, you know, they'll bring it nicely, slowly, <clears throat> in a deceptive manner so that you don't see the danger of it before you realize it will have become part of your culture. And you wonder how. Perhaps you won't even realize that you have shifted. So they do it secretly. But secondly, sometimes they might just bring it, boom! The first time you see it, you say, no, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's not correct. I'm not subscribed to that. But with time, you, you begin to say, wow, it's not as bad as I thought it was. Well, eh, nobody has died. Nobody is being injured. He's sticking to himself. What has happened is that that which seemed wrong at one time has now been sanitized slowly and it begins to look harmless and you begin to think, oh, maybe I was overreacting. But what is happening is that the mind is being desensitized to that which was wrong. I'll give you an example. At one time, uh, you and I lost the idea of abortion or even homosexuality. We thought those are abominations. They cannot happen. But guess what? They bring it secretly or in a very wise way in the, those soap opera movies that you and I are glued to. We love to watch. But nicely they weave it into the plot and you begin to say, oh, that person is gay. That person has aborted and so on. Oh, that, that, that's, that's your opinion. Let's leave on. So what happens is that your guards and my guards begin to come down. But thirdly, how do they manipulate? They, uh, they introduce something and then they put a hook in our mind. They, sometimes they even introduce fear in our mind. And once they have introduced it, they can pull it and uh, uh, take us in different direction. The other way, uh, I would give an example, those cartoons that were harmless when we were growing up. But some of those cartoons actually teach witchcraft actually teach some of those things that you and I have stood against, Satanism and so on. They, they, they make them like it's just a nice little story. Uh, and so our children are watching those and they think that they are harmless. But we need to go further. How does mind manipulation take place? Not only do are you introduced to this thing and then you get so accustomed, but mind manipulation happens when your mind becomes desensitized to something. Those things that startled you, those things that troubled you and I are things that we laugh about now and say, ah, that guy, and so on. What have they done? They have worked on your conscious and my conscious. And we begin not to even sense that certain things are wrong. But then there is also... The idea of uh, what somebody has been talking about, replacement. In other words, not only do they, do they uh, uh, train you or capture your mind in a certain way, but they, they begin to work in such a way that you begin to remove and change and, and, and throw away your thought pattern. And postmodernism does this very, very well. Because that which was... A fixed in the modern context, right or wrong, now becomes, well, it depends how you look at it. And in fact, you begin to say, mm. when somebody comes out dogmatically, for example, you say, no, that, that person is dangerous. Keep away from him. What has happened is that that value system, that, 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 that thinking that you had has been rubbed, systematically rubbed, and has been replaced by something else. But then mind manipulation also does take place uh, when your value system be becomes to be eroded and taken away. Now, we're talking about your worldview being supplanted and, and, and removing that which we have heard. You and I hold a biblical worldview. We hold that the story of Genesis is true and, and, and the story of Eve and Adam 
It's true. It actually happened. Satan did come and lead our first mother uh, into sin. You know what mind manipulation tells you? No, it's not true. It's just a fairy tale. It's a story of men. What are they doing? They are removing those serious things, those moral things, those, you know, anchors that we have held on as right and wrong. They are being supplanted. They are being, first of all, uprooted and then supplanted uh, by something else. What happens in the end is that your mind, your thought, your perception, your, you, you know, your values, everything that you have stood for now ceases either uh, to be important or it's minimized or it looks like, well, it's just one of those things. It won't affect you. Now, let me give you an example in theological circles. Some thoughts look very nice and sound and, you know, rational and so on, but they are actually undercutting the biblical teaching. They begin to say some parts of the Bible are important. Others are not important. Oh, the Bible has been edited. Oh, the Bible uh, is not God's word. It contains some parts of God's word. So all these are attack on the Christian faith. But I would like to say further uh, that mind manipulation also it can be even in things that seem good in and of themselves. For example, hard work and earning money and, 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 and being able to look after your family. What it does is that it keeps you so busy away from your family. You can't instruct your family. You yourself, your thought pattern, your devotions, your spirituality, all these things are eroded. You and I who are trying to make headway in our careers, we get so busy with these things and we forget uh, what God would like us to do. So we need to be very, very careful that our minds are not held captive as the apostle says. We are not, uh, we are not ignorant of Satan's schemes and our weapons are not carnal. They are spiritual to demolish and bring down strongholds, the thought pattern, the worldview. We must bring them down by God's word. What is the antidote? How can we stand and push back against the encroaching uh, and invading worldview, which has even seeped into the academia and into the seminary, into the schools, into the curriculum? Well, I'd like to suggest one or two things, uh, several things rather, antidotes. The first one is that Christians must invest in Christian education. They must train their children while they are young, so that before they go, they know what is right. And I may go further when you're talking about Christian education. I'm even talking about homeschooling. It's one thing that Christians need to think about. Our friends in the West have realized that the public schools are so, so dangerous. In Zambia, where I live, uh, it's not as bad, but it's coming. The seeds and elements and the principles of secularism and other things are everywhere. But a time is coming when it will be necessary to educate our children, perhaps from home. Well, that is the curriculum that our children are uh, introduced or exposed to. And, 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 and the curriculum usually is evolutionary based, it's naturalistic. It has thrown away all the element, elements of theistic or Christian religion. Number one, the curriculum. Number two, ensure that you ingest and take in the biblical meta-narrative, the biblical story from Genesis to Revelation. Make sure it is part of you. You meditate. You drink in God's word and make it your very own. Because when that is true, then you'll be able to tell what is right and what is wrong. Well, friends, uh, I could tell you many other things like the means of grace, reading the Bible, fellowship, uh, evangelism, uh, and even just intentionally training our people. Those, those are ways that we can use to push back from, against this mighty force that is coming upon us. Well, if our people are empowered, they will not fall prey to those uh, you know, those people who 
pry on vulnerable minds in in our churches you know remember those magicians they would tell you all sorts of nice stories in the name of christianity or religion when actually they're just imposters but if our people are trained well they'll be able to detect error from afar and avoid it well friends i will end there but just to say that mind manipulation is very very strong it's a great potent enemy of the christian faith and and it has come in the form of the new age movement for instance uh, craig len craig warns us and even uh, other you know sound theologians that the greatest danger that we have is now on the mind so if somebody is in charge of my mind then they're in charge of my hobby christian person Make sure you take in God's word. Take it and hide it in your heart. Put on the helmet of salvation to guard and guard the mind but the breastplate of righteousness and so on so that you'll be able to stand against the devil's schemes. Christian in Pilgrim's Progress, uh, at one point, uh, you know, his armor was like, exposed but then he, he he had to make sure that the darts of the evil one do not enter so his back was exposed and it was very dangerous so he had to go on forward 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 but sadly many christians today do not realize that their thinking is hijacked postmodernism has crept into the church and now people are debating god's word which is the final authority. If you are presuppositional, you need to ensure that you uh, do the right thing. Well, I must be going off for now, and I hope this helps you. But don't forget to do that assignment. Thank you.